Hello, everyone, and welcome to our Epnoi Talks. My name is Pedro Fardin, and I am president of Epnoi Association. Epnoi Association is a non-profit organization promoting research, education, and knowledge transfer between academia, industry, and society in all fields related to polysaccharide science and technology. Epnoi members have several advantages. For example, for networking and collaboration, for participation in events, for career advancement uh, opportunities, uh, also discounted, discounted fees in our events. If you have interested to know more about Epnoi, please visit our website, www.epnoi.eu. You have also have opportunities to subscribe to our newsletter where you can find more information on what we are doing. Okay, today we have a, a great pleasure and honor to have in our Epnoi Talks, the Epnoi Ambassadress in Brazil, Professor Elizabeth Florini from University of Sao Paulo. Hello, Hello. Beth. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hello. So Professor Elizabeth Friolini is our first ever ambassador. And uh, we have uh, very many reasons for that. She is extremely, she is well known in the field of, of fibers and macromolecular materials and in, in, in polysaccharides. She is the head of um, macromolecular materials and lignocellulosic fibers group. And also the coordinator of the center for Research and Science and Technology of Bioresources of University of Sao Paulo. University of Sao Paulo is one of the leading universities in, in, in Latin America uh, with more than 80,000 students and um, 11 campi, 11 or 12 campi, right, Beth? Uh, Elizabeth? Yeah. yeah, so it's a large, uh, large university um, uh, in many, in many, in many uh, areas, right? Uh, Professor Friolini is also the editor-in-chief for the um, Elsevier journal Industrial Crops and Products, and uh, she is also active on the editorial board of Cellulose. So it's a great pleasure to have you here, Professor Friolini. And uh, I would like first to, to talk to you a little a, a bit about your experience with Ipnoi, because you have a uh, you have been in Epnoi event since the first Epnoi conference already uh, in Finland. And I would like to know a little bit of how, has, how this experience has been. Thank you very much for inviting me for talking, Pedro. It's a great pleasure. I was honored to be invited to an oral presentation at the first Epnoi in 2009, uh, which was held in Turku, Finland and organized by you and other researchers. I devoted the events to some colleagues and then there was a, a little Brazilian committee uh, in Turku. And uh, as uh, you know, Brazil is just a little bit far from Turku. Then it was a, a, a very good opportunity to know Turku. I felt very involved in that event, which as far as I know, was the first uh, centered on uh, polysaccharides. Uh, and so I continued to participate in all of the following events uh, with, my, with my students participation in some of them. Then I, I have a, a strong link with Epinoy, I can say. Yes, and we are very happy with this opportunity to help to have you as our ambassador in Brazil. But uh, can you tell you you mentioned that there are two quiz at the distance to and, and, and Brazil is yeah thousands and thousand kilometers. The distance uh, Brazil Europe is thousand and thousand kilometers. Also. So and maybe some, it would be very nice to hear a little bit about Brazil and the events in Brazil. So. Uh, Brazil has many conferences, local conferences, local communities. Can you tell us 
a little bit about your experience with those those events because you have been very active in Brazil with several associations with different types of organizations. Can you give us a picture of those events over there? Uh, we have uh, here in Brazil several events that occur periodically and others will it not find frequency. Among those that uh, have periodicity and considering those that uh, have some interface with polysaccharides, I can mention the Brazilian MRS meeting uh, organized by the Brazilian Materials Research Society. Also the Brazilian Polymer Congress organized by the Brazilian Polymer Association and the annual meeting uh, organized by the Brazilian Chemical Society, which has a materials division. And uh, finally, I can mention the International Symposium on Natural Polymers and Composites, uh, which is not linked to societies or association. It was created by Professor Alcides Leão from the State University of Sao Paulo, with whom I had the pleasure to of organizing the first event and several others. Uh, and you present the um, invited talk at the eighth international symposium on natural polymers and composites, which was held in uh, 2018. And uh, it was the last one. Uh, then we, we have se several and important scientific events uh, here in Brazil, and uh, many with uh, uh, interfacing with polysaccharides. Yes, Professor Florini, one thing that is all very interesting when we go to events in Brazil is you see that people are, the community in Brazil, first that you have a lot of participants, and also you have a very positive People are very motivated to participate to, to, to participate in this event. Um, is it uh, is it normal? I mean, or, or is, it, is, is, is you see this in all events there that our people are so positive and so uh, see, happy to be uh, presenting their work and interacting with uh, with researchers? Yes, usually all events are very significant participation of uh, uh, from the Brazilian uh, including many students, which, which is very important. And uh, Brazil, as you know, has continental dimensions. Then uh, these events, uh, in addition to their intrinsic importance, also enable researchers to get to know each other, uh, which can lead to scientific collaborations. Then this is a very important uh, aspect. Uh, for us. And the permanence of these events is vital, I can say, uh, which certainly depends on funding, mainly by the agencies uh, that support the research in our country. Yes, we are looking forward for opportunities to build uh, collaborations in Brazil, to have conferences there that we can have our members, ethnoi members, interacting with the, with, the, with the Brazilian researchers, yes. But now I would like to move a bit to, to about your, Brazil is a, is, a, is, a, is a giant on biomass, is a giant on bio resources and renewable resources. And I would like to know a little bit more about your research. So I'd like to know about what you have been doing in this area of um, uh, macromolecular materials and what are your research interests and research vision in a country that is so rich in, in, in bioresources. Okay, if I may, I consider a timeline. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the teams of uh, the teams of my master's and PhD were in the area of organic physical chemistry involving small molecules. When I finished my PhD, I already had a position at the University of uh, Sao Paulo at the Chemistry Institute. And the, the research group in which I work since my master and PhD and later as a doctoral professor, a pro, a doctoral professor as is named in Brazil, 
uh, this group changed the line of research to lignocellulose, mainly aiming uh, at the extract lignins uh, using different processes. And uh, so I decided to use lignin as a reagent in the synthesis of polymers. Uh, later used as matrices in composites reinforced by lignocellulosic fibers. Then I fell in love with the new line of research and I decided to invest in polysaccharides as well. And uh, as a consequence, my postdoc was at the Centre, of, uh, Centre de Recherche sur la macromolécule végétale uh, in Grenoble, France, uh, under the supervision of Professor Marguerite Grenodot. When I returned to Brazil, I continued with the line of research on lignin and lignocellulosic fibers, and I added cellulose as the main polysaccharide of interest in my research. In the meantime, lignocellulose Lost by refineries emerged with great force, not only in Brazil, but around the world, uh, which placed the cellulose in, and lignin in prominent positions. Now, in summary, regarding materials, my current interest lies in composites formed from matrices, mag, uh, sorry, from matrices synthesized from a high content of renewables reinforced by fibers widely available in Brazil as sisal or sisal, uh, also the synthesis of polymers from high uh, content of renewables, uh, including cellulose with simultaneous formation of films seek, uh, seeking non-cytotoxic materials uh, to expand the range of application of this kind of uh, materials. Also, we have prepared materials from electrospinning, including cellulosics. And outside the materials area, I've been investigating the sacrification process, uh, mainly via enzymatic hydrolysis. And using lignocellulosic is practically not explored in Brazil with this target, uh, such as uh, sisal or sisal. Uh, emphasizing that Brazil is the world's largest producer of this uh, fiber. Uh, I can mention also Curauá, a plant which grows in Amazon, among others. And uh, uh, for me, a very important thing that I would like to mention is that uh, the disciplines that I have thought through the years uh, at the undergraduate and graduate levels in the areas of organic chemistry and macromolecules have been my great partners in research because I need this background in the research lines that uh, I have chosen. And uh, regarding specifically uh, polysaccharides, the research in polysaccharides and companions such as lignin. And thinking about a wide spectrum of uh, application, in my opinion, this tends to grow more and more uh, due to the expectation of the society, which has led to, emerge, to the emergence of concepts such as circular bioeconomy, in which the polysaccharides fit perfectly, then I, I think that uh, the interest in this area is irreversible. Yes, and thank uh, you very much for giving this uh, very nice overview about your research and uh, your career, how you, 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 you see how this evolved together with the science of polysaccharides evolving. And what was interesting, you mentioned about polysaccharides and materials that we have, that you have there in Brazil, but we don't have elsewhere. Can you tell a little bit of, about this potential, about the, these pictures of uh, polysaccharides in Brazil and uh, 
what are the great potential, for example, for building collaborative efforts uh, in these new materials? Because if we think about uh, what you say, exotic or new polysaccharides, for example, you can imagine that uh, the ar arrangement or the structure of this system is structure and property relationships. There are many opportunities to learn from these systems, uh, not only with traditional systems that we are usually uh, busy here in Europe. Can you give us a picture about this, uh, how Brazil can be an interesting, I would say, partner for this type of um, research ad adventures? Uh, I think the emergence of uh, lignocellulosic birefineries has greatly increased the interest in polysaccharides in uh, Brazil. Uh, I also remember uh, the forest birefineries uh, linked to the area of, of uh, cellulose and paper, uh, which have the diversified their interest, both concerning lignin. Uh, as well as cellulose and uh, hemicellulose, uh, looking also at the materials area. Thus, many groups are currently researching these areas here. And the Brazilians are always very enthusiastic towards collaborative researchers with foreign researchers. And I think the collaboration in these areas uh, mentioned as well other areas, uh, have still room to increase significantly. Mm -hmm. um, we, you also mentioned that Brazil is a continental country. Uh, people don't realize Brazil is 40% bigger than whole Europe. Yeah? And, uh, and with this size, it also comes complexity, right? So can you give us and to our viewers a little bit uh, a picture of, uh, of uh, uh, how complex or how is the funding agencies in Brazil working? Do we have a federal agency? Do we have a local agencies? How is this, how research is funded there? Just to give a picture, a general picture. Okay. Uh, the research is mostly developed in universities here in uh, Brazil. And uh, we also have some uh, research units. Uh, we depend primarily on the support of uh, research funding agencies. Uh, collaborative projects with the industrial sector uh, is still occur on a small scale here. And uh, think about a uh, national scale, uh, financial support is mainly linked to the National Council for Scientific and Technological Development and also the Brazilian Innovation Agency. Agency. In the state of Sao Paulo, where I live, uh, we have a strong state agency, the Sao Paulo Research Foundation. Uh, thus, we depend on calls. And uh, in the case of Sao Paulo Research Foundation, we can apply projects in continuous flow. In summary, we strongly depend on the country's economic situation. Yes. This is the reality. <laughs> yeah, there's like in everywhere, like everywhere. But Professor Folini, how do you see um, how Brazilians and how Brazil and Europe could join efforts, for example, to build uh, research in, in, in policy what, How How do you see, as an ambassador from Illinois now, you know what we are doing in Illinois, you know what is going on in Brazil. How do you see this interaction? What could be the, the main, obviously the advantages and the, what new could be created from this interaction? Uh, I see many possibilities for uh, Brazilian and uh, European researchers uh, to work together in the field of polysaccharides. The sink of them is considering complementary research. That is, each team using its own uh, financial resources. Uh, it, it is uh, easy uh, to, to this kind of uh, collaboration. Uh, in addition, we need to be attentive to international European calls 
uh, in which Brazil is one of the partners. Uh, also, we have programs in Brazil for student internship abroad. Uh, for example, do, during the de development of a thesis, the student can develop part of uh, the project abroad, uh, which is called the Sandwich Doctorate. This can be the beginning of a long-term collaboration between the supervisor uh, from Brazil and abroad. This is other possibility. Now the programs are closed to the pandemic situation, but uh, usually uh, this works very well. Yeah, so this is uh, very interesting because if people know each other, uh, there are many opportunities uh, yeah, in, in different agencies in Brazil with the agencies in, in Sao Paulo for exchange of students uh, to, to have uh, students uh, in Europe with the sandwich system and also for um, for Europeans to go to Brazil. I mean, there are, there are many funding possibilities uh, for this exchange. So, yeah. uh, Professor Fruli, what could be the first step to EPNOI members? Um, if they were willing to, to build collaboration with Brazil, what could be the first step they would take in order to, to build these connections? Uh, in my view, the interactions uh, of EPNOI with a Brazilian association is a very significant step. Uh, this uh, makes possible an important exchange of infor information, such as about scientific events, uh, disclosure of interest of research partnership, among uh, other uh, aspects. Uh, another possibility, which may take some time, we would be get a specific call involving epinoi, that is polysaccharides, uh, with the support of development agents from Europe and uh, Brazil. Yeah, I yeah. think to, yeah. to beginning. <laughs> yeah, that would be nice, nice opportunity. It would be very nice opportunity. Professor Fredini, uh, as a, a closing question, we are always very interested to know uh, and, and to give some tips to our young viewers, to our young researcher, particularly uh, we see our uh, young females researchers and so on, and uh, that they, uh, we see you as a, as a successful researcher, as a, as a, as a successful scientist. What be your what would be your tips and um, say suggestions for for them to reach a successful position as you as you have? Can you can you give us some tips? Okay. First of all, thank you very much for considering my, that my career is successful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I think the search for advancement and therefore for success must be eternal. <laughs> and the part of uh, our day to day. Uh, I'm not quite sure if uh, I have good tips for women and girls who want to pursue an academic career uh, at a university or at a research center. Anyway, I think the important thing is to like the chosen professor a lot. Since a significant part of our life is our lives is dedicated to uh, working. Fortunately, I love both teaching and research. That's part of my academic career. And uh, certainly the fact that I choose to be a mother of two children impacted my career. Uh, but I would give up neither one nor the other. <laughs> and I think we have to be aware that achieving our dreams may involve multiple tasks, many tasks, <laughs> many work, hard work. Mm -hmm. This is very important. Okay. Excellent. Professor Folini, it was really a pleasure to have you here. 
uh, in our Ipnoi Talks, Professor Elizabeth Follini from University of Sao Paulo in Brazil, our Ipnoi Ambassadress in Brazil. Thank you so much for your time and for sharing with us uh, all your views about uh, potential collaboration and also your, your view on research. Thank you so much for your contribution. I thank you again for inviting me, Pedro. This talk was a great pleasure for me. Thank you.